What is going on guys? It has been forever since I've made a video. Oh, when I looked on YouTube it said it's been about six months. If some of you are new to the channel, because I did see I got some new subscribers, the reason it's been so long is I got a new job at an antique mall and I've been very, very busy with that and house rentals, so eBay and Amazon and everything kind of slacked. There's no real point in making videos about eBay and Amazon and reselling if I'm not really doing it. Uh, I know some of you were curious about the antique mall, so I included some footage of me walking through what it looks like now and a little bit of what it looked like before we kind of opened it so you can see some of the changes it's been doing really well it's been really well received so hopefully the antique mall keeps going and uh, keeps us busy anyways the other thing I got to add to the video today is electronics those are all free what I got behind me I'll show you a close-up of them in a second but basically I gotta go through and test them all they all came out of an e-waste so they all owe me zero dollars I'm gonna see what some of them are worth and more than likely I'll make a good couple hundred bucks off this haul Alright, so I'm going to start backwards, I guess, because I'm in the back garage instead of going through the front room of the antique mall, but this is just the back workshop where we hold crap, I'll work on things. It's a giant mess right now, i got to clean it up, got some display cases i got to paint, and uh, yeah, I just hold a lot of stuff out here. It's not bad though, you know, we got the roll-up door and some lumber supply to the right junk I gotta finish painting and projects and it's just messy I gotta clean it all up so we'll head out of here and I'll actually show you kinda what you guys probably wanna see which is the antique mall so I dubbed over this because somehow I lost all my footage uh, but basically we're starting at the very back of the antique mall so if you came in through the front doors and walked all the way back you'd be here that's kinda where that garage was I was just showing you guys this is one guy's big booth he does estate clearouts and gets a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, it's a pretty good booth. He moves a lot of product out of here. I'll kind of point out booths that do really well and don't do well. Uh, teak stuff like that dresser does amazing. So for any of you guys who are thinking about opening up an antique booth mall or uh, are doing this already and you want some tips, I might be able to help now. I wouldn't call myself a professional yet, but after eight months of seeing steadily every day kind of what sells out of an antique mall, I've started to get a good idea. Uh, like I said, this guy does pretty good. Electronics, uh, they do okay. He's priced a little high on them. If you price them right, they do okay. Records do amazing. 70s, 80s, and early 90s when it was the end of records. They do awesome. Rock and roll, R&B, hip-hop, alternative, uh, classic rock, all that stuff does amazing. Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, uh, we sell so much out of there. This kind of stuff does good too. This guy makes all his own signs and metalwork. Pretty neat. And then this vendor has both sides, two 30-foot sections. They're... Um, 15 by 30 I think so there's a lot of square footage they've been doing it for a long time again another very successful booth uh, you can see how it's clean organized you can see everything there's not like really too much of a theme they have everything together where it should be like trains are with trains and die casts are with die casts this thing's cool it's a 1920s slot machine and it works you put five cents in it and you pull that thing down and it takes your five cents I haven't won yet I've tossed a couple nickels in it uh, it has been repainted and then the back's not original but the internals are all original and that's like a twelve hundred dollar machine it's not something you'd see a lot of same with that billows coffee table uh, it would have definitely been in a forge or a black shop or a black shop a blacksmith shop uh, someone's turned it into a coffee table you can tell because there's feet on the bottom of it and there's that little latch on the back so it would have been a handle you crank up and down or it would have been a foot pedal to operate it pretty cool not something I've ever seen before be interesting to see if it even sells or not and then you know you got your generic antique mall stuff bottles die cast die cast do good uh, milk bottles with the silk printings do good old gas cans like that are pretty decent sellers old fans you got to price them right though uh, fans you know old ones like that I see range anywhere from 30 to 60 bucks people like the metal blades a lot more in the chrome finishes um, you know trains do good all this kind of stuff does good that's all like Corgi and Matchbox and Dinky Toy and Lionel uh, if you know what you're looking for for that stuff it can do pretty good there's nothing huge you know you're gonna get like anywhere from four dollars all the way up to 12 15 bucks a piece on them but you'll sell a couple of them a day normally just more die cast they have a nice booth I do like browsing their booth a lot and then we'll carry on we got Stormy Daniels here that mannequin most likely came out of an adult shop uh, it's pretty funny Here's another okay example of a booth, other than they do have a lot of glassware. Glassware is a hard sell. These old door handles are not, though, because if you have a historic home and you're trying to uh, make it period correct, good luck finding old working hardware. It's really a pain. Uh, these things you'll get 30 to 60 bucks a piece. It depends the door handle and the mechanisms. Then you got old glassware. Uh, it's 
a tough sell unless you want to sell it really cheap. It's kind of like artwork. There's certain pieces that are worth a lot of money. I don't know enough about it right now, but 85% of the glassware in the place does not move. This guy's booth is a mess. This is how you don't sell things. It's a disaster. You can't see anything. It's hard to get in around and behind it. Cheap piano. It does work. Um, that's not how you want a booth to look. Unfortunately, he is very sick, so he will not be coming in probably anytime soon to clean up his booth, which, you know, that's okay. Uh, we'll wait for him to get better. He's doing a lot worse than we are with a bit of a mess. He does have some nice vintage jewelry in here and old watches. They do sell pretty good. Um, again, though, it's just kind of a mess and his tags aren't great, so with a good cleanup, it would do good. He's got some G.I. Joe's, Hot Wheels. Again, he's got to clean it up, though. Like, that's a messy booth. If you guys are trying to be successful with your antique booth, don't have a booth like this. Sorry for the shaky camera, too. I'm kind of just running about here. Uh, same with this booth. See how it's very closed in? To walk through here is tight. Like, I'm not a big dude, and I just fit through. So if you're in a wheelchair or a bigger fella or someone who is less mobile because you're maybe a little older, which a lot of elderly browse through antique malls, you're not going to be able to get in here. Like, how am I going to get to this glassware with all the stuff in the way? And their sales show that. It, it lacks in sales. Unpriced stuff, just stuff on the floor. People don't want to bend down to pick things up. Again, there's a lot of elderly. If you're really old, Bending down can be a pain in the ass, so you don't want to do that. They have interesting stuff, and they would be doing really good in sales. They just they need to open it up, you know, push that case aside, turn the desk around, just make it more accessible or get more space if you have too big of items. I mean, those are your two options. And then here's a good example. Very open. I can walk through it if I want to get to the back or get to the table or anywhere to, you know, pick up an item to buy. I can get to it. I can see everything clearly. Things are grouped in likewise categories. That bowl I just pointed at, that is something that does sell. Those col colored Pyrex bowls or the vintage Anchor King or whatever they're called. Royal Daltons like I was just showing you, don't sell. No one wants Royal Daltons. That retro chair, that's a good thing to have. Tea cart, good luck. Um, there's some in here for like 20 bucks and no one is buying them. Just no one wants tea carts. Old signs, new signs do good. Old gas cans do good. Any old automotive memorabilia seems to do pretty good. The canoe's very cool. It's an old 1930s beaten, built in Peterborough, but it hasn't sold in a while, probably because it's been here all winter. Now that we're getting into spring and good weather, there's a better chance of it selling. These are some old doors. The audio cut out. Otherwise, you could have heard the cool doorbell. Uh, it was neat. It looks like a knocker, but you pull it up and it, it goes ding, and then you set it down dong, and so it's kind of neat nice stained glass in it ahead of me is another good example of a booth he has mostly like oh, automotive die cast stuff like that he does have some cds uh more like a man theme but it's again clean you can get in there easy there's even seats in there for people to relax kind of what you want to see as a booth again not too bad pretty clean uh she has some nice stuff in there some of it could uh be a little different or priced a little lower here's a bit of a messy booth there's another one that makes no sales and that's again because a mess this one makes no sales either price point this one does amazing people love booths like this this i don't know shabby chic that whitewash furniture and those like handmade signs and old barn board signs people eat that up it's a very successful booth this guy has a bit of a messy booth, but it is not too bad. He does all right. There's a lot of tools in there. Again, this one's okay. They're not utilizing the space great. Uh, you know, they're using up all their back wall space with a the drapery. They should have shelves and items. This guy does okay. People like old tools, and they do like old fishing lures. Um, he's a little high on some of the fishing stuff. I can't control what vendors price their stuff for, but he is a little high. And again, sales show. That one's an alright booth. That one's, you know, it does okay. They're pretty new. It's hard to say how well they're going to do. There's a nice straight shot of how long it is. Um, this is only the second room. Then we'll be in the restaurant. Then we have a third room. This booth does pretty well. Uh, that one does not. It's a disaster. You can't get at anything. Everything's dusty. This is another good example of a booth. A little more opened up. Kind of, sort of its own theme and style. Uh, that booth does okay. It could be cleaned up a little bit. Too much stuff on the floor. This is like the old toy booth. He has old toys and movie memorabilia. Movie memorabilia, old toys, things like that. Ghostbusters figures and Toy Story figures and old G.I. Joes. Those do pretty good too. I find you can get more money for those kind of things on eBay if you do the eBay thing. But at the same time, it's pretty nice to set it in an antique mall and 
list it and forget it. That bike's cool. It's an old bone shaker. I want to ride it, but I don't want to break it. It's like a $1,200 bike. These are nice pieces of furniture. This stuff does well. People like these like little dressers and bookshelves. People don't want china cabinets and display cabinets. That's a tough sell. Uh, jam cupboards can do okay. And then if you whitewash it like that other booth, it does well. This guy does, again, okay. He's got a lot of old books. Old books aren't a huge seller. He does sell the odd interesting one. This is another boot that does pretty good. People do like cupboards like that. That's a good one to watch for. Um, but again, no one really wants like a display case or a china cabinet. No one has china. Uh, those are a little racist, but kind of interesting. It's got more in there. Some of them are worth a lot of money. And then this is a cool case. I end up having to open this case up a lot for customers. Uh, he's got a lot of World War II, World War I stuff. Those are old Ford Model T lights, I think. Yeah, Model T. Um, a lot of old badges and bayonets and things like that. This booth does okay. They are the only booth that has these weird head vases. I guess I've never seen them before working here. I've heard people say they're going to use them to hold the toothbrush. I've heard people say they're going to put them on their desk to hold pens. That they're going to put little succulent plants in them, like those little cactus. It's a whole bunch you could do. And then we walk out to the restaurant. It's getting towards the end of the day, so there's not going to be a lot of people. There's our cook, Nancy. We got that retro theme with the red and the blues and stuff like that and the checkered floor. The tables and chairs and all that actually came with the restaurant. We did add this whole stainless top and all the barn board though. We moved that table over there. Um, a lot of work's been done. This whole thing was painted. It was like nicotine yellow before. It was all cleaned up. That's one of our helpers. That's Ellen. There's our Coke fridge, little desk. It was given to us for free. And this is our main display. When you come in, cash, it's sitting up there. Um, we change it monthly or we try to just make so anyways, we can head into the main room. Those are my grandpa's birdhouses, by the way he builds them. So this is pretty much all consignment right here. All this middle section is just kind of what people bring us in. We take 30% on consignment. Um, some of it I'm going to have to start moving to the back auction house soon. Uh, we haven't run an auction yet. It's basically set up. All that's left is for me to catalog everything, take all the photos and list them. Here's another bad example of a booth. They do okay on sales because of the location. It's the front room, but it's a mess. Old vintage Playboys. Well, they're not really vintage, but they're sealed ones. Um, they're a consignment piece. You know, they were probably hiding under all of our mattresses at one point. I don't know if they're going to sell or not. We're going to try it out and see. This kind of stuff does good if you're into the old money. Uh, there's some funny old Trump bills in there too. Uh, not my style of stuff in here, but she's good with glassware. She sort of knows what sells. There's more of my grandpa's birdhouses. Um... They are pretty cool. We've sold a few of them. I'm trying to think of what else we got. If I do show that booth that we just passed to my left, they do okay. But again, cups and glasses are a hard sell. This guy sells nothing but records, four fifty a piece, and he moves a ton of them. Uh, it goes pretty far back too. This booth, another one that does amazing. It's uh, you know, like I don't even know what that is, but they turned it into a light. That's an old heater turned into a light. Like there's an old meat grinder turned into a desk lamp. People love that stuff. She has a little booth, but she does pretty good too. That boat's kind of cool. Uh, this is my booth. There's where I sell my crap out of. It's full. Um, I actually got to unorg or organize it soon. It's getting a little too full. VHS tapes do sell, especially anime and cartoon ones and old 90s shows. You're not going to get crazy money though, four to five bucks. Same with the DVDs. I get anywhere from like three to 10, 15 bucks for a season. Some of the old Coke stuff in there. I got some old CDC videos and laser discs, old tools, Commodore, old Pong system, some electronics. I don't know, mix of stuff. I got a bunch of toys in here. Late 80s and early 90s toys. That kind of stuff sells all right. Um, I switch it up a lot, but it's it's more man cave stuff. You'll just find action figures and uh, comics and electronics, a couple old books, some hats, video games, uh, CDs, just a mixed lot of stuff. Uh, when I filmed this, that Harley jacket was still there. It sold. Same with the Harley shirt behind it. A um, couple other things sold. A couple video games sold. That robot's gone. Some of those shoes are gone. Um, that lamp's pretty cool. I just put it in there. I don't know how long it'll take to sell. Um, some of those cameras are gone too. Uh, I think that John Deere thing sold, so I do all right. I make anywhere. This has been a bit of a slow month, so I'm only uh, at about 160 bucks. But the so far the lowest month I've had was around 380. The best month I had was almost 700. And this is a pretty small booth to be doing that out of. More glassware, like every kind of antique mall around. She does all right. There's a glassware to look for: Vaseline glass or uranium glass, whatever you want to call it. If you put it under a black light, it glows. Just Google uranium glass 
or Vaseline glass under black light and you'll see what I mean it actually glows really really cool so it keeps going uh, these small booths here we're actually ripping completely out we're gonna put one right down the center with big booths on either side instead of these little ones uh, most of these people I guess will be moved out some are gonna get bigger spaces the ones that have good sales like this gentleman does very well with all his Tonka and his die cast and tractor stuff uh, this guy doesn't and there's an example of what no one wants overpriced crystal good luck this guy will be moving out so I don't need to worry too much about him uh, he does okay though insulators are a good thing to watch for you get anywhere five ten bucks um, this is actually a surprisingly good booth it's not very stocked right now but he does a lot of die cast too and action figures hockey cards this guy makes all the stuff he makes things look like robots they also have a larger booth in the back so they'll just be moving everything to the back or the back of this building which you'll see shortly he does okay it's kind of a unique thing um, a lot of these are getting emptied out this is another guy that does really good he actually has another booth in the back he does good with all his die cast and there's the back room here's that robot guy and this is basically the last of it there's like um, a little office behind me and that's that's about it again they do okay they don't sell a lot of those made robot things and then this person just set up too they do a lot more primitives there's a little office well, I could have turned the exposure down there um, they do pretty good Mo most people do pretty good here if people aren't doing good sales it's it's mainly comes down to two things actually three I guess first thing is organization and theme if it's just a cluttered mess and looks like a junk shop no one wants to go through it second thing is price point if your prices are too high no one's gonna buy it and third is the item but it, even more so it's still the price point because even glassware if you put it cheap enough people still buy it um, you know you try and explain that to some vendors and they think something that 20 years ago was worth a hundred dollars like Royal Dalton's are still worth a hundred dollars which they unfortunately aren't things come and go right if you don't keep up with market trends you're not gonna be very successful at it here's something that does actually pretty good they're they're neat we sold a few of them these old pipes you want to look for pipes carved out of shells actually I guess that has more value to them uh, here is some glassware that actually does do good it's that white stoneware stuff uh, we sell a lot of stoneware out of here don't know why but it sells I don't even know if the camera's gonna focus on it there you go or ironstone that's what it's called ironstone stoneware it's weird stuff, but if you see it, it seems to sell anywhere from like three bucks to twenty-five bucks for bigger items. That lamp sold pretty quick. They only had thirty dollars on it. See, that's too cheap for that lamp. Probably could have got more. I bet you the shades were thirty dollars on that. He does okay. That booth that was just there needs a clean up. This case is pretty cool. It spins. A lot of people turn the thing though until there's nothing showing and they leave it at that. Um, old railroad land trains. Actually, anything train related does pretty good there's a big following for train stuff he does all right on his artwork I don't understand artwork so I can't give you any information on it I don't know become an art expert I guess because the ones that he does sell usually sell for a good penny uh, books comics more glassware uh, these are our consignment items some random garbage pale kids I think that's what they're called weren't they and old uh, stereograph viewmaster comes with a whole bunch of the slides old zenith radio bunch of old action figures you know nothing crazy they're only a couple dollar items but this is all consignment stuff if it doesn't sell in 30 days though a lot of this stuff will be going to the auction house that tank is pretty cool as it rolls forward you put a cap inside and the top leans back and it smacks the cap like a little cap gun it's pretty cool uh, here's a booth that again they do okay but cups and stuff's a hard sell uh, furniture too it's it's a harder sell nowadays it depends what it is this thing I don't know if it'll sell it's pretty cool though he hand carved it he said he's got over 40 hours into carving it and there's another R right booth but that about does it for the antique ball I'll quickly show you the outside but that's about it there's more renovations to come though so there it is that's the restaurant portion actually that's the back half there's gonna be a patio over there that extends back it's all foresty we had all this landscaping done and trees done and that funky old metal done sorry the saturation's a little bright I'm kind of pointing towards the subway there's the entrance we had built it's pretty cool did all this front work um, there is oh god that's bright there's our outside sign you know there's there's where the auction house is gonna be in that pavilion and then nothing but beautiful landscape behind it Let's see if I can get it behind the truck view sorry for the bumpiness there's kind of what it looks like from the roadside. Alright, well, that was basically the antique mall you guys saw. Now back to testing these electronics. 
the first one is this Samsung DVD VHS burner recorder. So you can convert your VHS to DVD player. Anytime you guys see a dual unit like this, if it has the ability to burn VHS to DVD or burn DVDs, uh, they're usually always worth picking up and worth a good amount of money. Uh, just the split players too, even without the, the burnables, are usually anywhere from a 30 to $80 grab depending on the model. Uh, what you want to look for is like that RWR you see on the front or DVD RW on the front. That's a pretty good dead giveaway it's gonna record them make sure it says recording and uh, they're usually a bit of a bigger unit and there's normally a fan on the back as well and there goes my camera not wanting to focus again i need a new camera that should be on my list of things to get uh, if you guys do want to look it up it's kind of hard to make out it's a dvd vr350 for the model number um yeah ram rwr on the front it's a little dirty but it should work and looking it up comps on ebay or around the 140 dollar mark so we'll throw a dvd in here and see what happens all right put some earthworm gym in there and see if we get a video um, just for the sake of time i'm not gonna show you guys testing every input but i will normally check uh the component and then s video and av just it depends whatever outputs it has to make sure they also work hdmi sometimes outputs can die and you don't know what the customer is uh is going to use when they get it also i keep a big stack of video cables wrapped up and zip tied so when i do sell these i normally include some rca cables or component or whatever it may be in hdmi it uh doesn't really bring any more value it just maybe helps set yours apart a little bit from the next one and here you go the dvd is working great so success the only other thing to test will be the vhs on this um, also i usually keep a couple vhs tapes around just for this purpose i keep more than one because sometimes they break so we got ren and stimpy see if we can just stick it in and if it switches right over from dvd because i think this one is supposed to there we go oh it wants to eject the tape so sometimes this happens um it can mean that you just have a crappy tape which actually was the case with this it was just an old tape it also can mean that there's just a bit of dust on the head and it's not reading the tape correctly a little bit of compressed air normally fixes that rate up so we'll just stick it back in give her a little shove and see what happens and there it is spinning up and we have ren and stimpy playing i used to love this show as a kid clearly the vhs has auto tracking too so this is a good unit uh this will get wiped down a little bit because you guys can see it is pretty dusty and then we will put it up on okay so next thing i'm testing is a bell hd pvr this is a satellite set top box and basically how i will test this i don't have a bell satellite so i will plug it in i'll go to the dvr menu if it powers on and i will watch the recorded tv shows or movies whatever said person recorded and i'll use that to test all the outputs to make sure the video works uh, again i can't hook it up to a satellite i do list that in the in the ebay listing uh, and then also i check an rn number on the back and i make sure that that rn number when i call into bell or whichever cable or satellite provider is not linked to a restricted or deactivated account because sometimes they'll lock them out and these things are basically useless uh, if they are free and open or just need a switch over i put that in the listing i take a picture of the rn number and i let the uh the buyer know uh, it's pretty easy to do most will know how to do that you just like i said call into the provider they're pretty nice sometimes they try and sell you on services but whatever you know that's just how they work uh, but this said unit i actually sold uh before putting this video up and it sold for 85 dollars. i took an offer it was 110 so these are something to watch out for and this was again free in the e-waste bin so we're already uh almost 200 bucks in in findings so next thing to test is this Sansui VHS player. I got it all plugged in and the input's hooked up. And uh, I went to put a tape in. And as you're about to see, there was already a tape inside it. It was a blank VHS. So normally, uh, that probably contains an adult video. Um, this thing, if it works, I will get around the... 25 30 dollar mark for it i gotta clean it up it's pretty scuffed up and nothing a bit of plastic x and cleaner won't fix though so yeah i go to put in the tape and then yeah tape in there eject and this did end up eating the tape as you're gonna see here when i pull it out it just gets stuck and a little bit destroyed 
I did try to wind this back up um, and try to replay it just to see if it would work. But again, I couldn't really get any picture out of it. Every time I tried to to play the tape, it just sort of jammed and, and kind of wrecked the tape. You could probably fix it, uh, but for the $30, $40, like, max that this thing's worth, that's on the high end. Likely I'd get, like, 15 to 20 at the Antique Mall for it. I'm not really gonna piss around with it and try and fix it. All right, next thing we're testing is this Samsung DVD burner. I unfortunately don't have any blank uh, DVDs, so that makes it a little hard to test the burning aspect of it. But I can at least play a DVD through it, make sure the, the laser's reading discs properly. Just got to hook up the AV cables and give it a test. So far out of everything I've tested, just the one VHS player was bad. So, I mean, if this works too... This is about a $75 to $100 unit, so I'm already with this, the DVD VHS burner and the uh, Bell Satellite receiver. I'm at about $300, $320 bucks before fees and all that stuff, which really isn't bad for a bunch of free stuff out of an e-waste bin. So we'll pop a DVD in here and see what happens. And you can see on the front there, RWR, there's a thing you want to look for again for uh, DVD recorder, rewritable. And it works. It's playing the DVD just fine. It sucks there's no remote with this. That greatly increases the value for some of these. Actually, some of the DVD burner and VHS to DVD converters need a remote to function properly. Not all do, but, but some definitely do. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't sell them. It's just they bring more value if you have the remote with it. That's all. All right, so we got a Yamaha DVD player, which a little odd. I haven't seen a lot of Yamaha DVD players. Um, I actually just recently picked up a Harman Kardon Blu-ray player. That's another one I haven't seen a lot of for Blu-ray players. More just like stereo receivers and stuff like that. But anyways, again, it was free, so we'll give her an open. That disc tray already didn't look like it was closing very good, so I didn't have very high hopes for this. Pop her in, reading, and... It basically does this for a long time and then eventually I believe says no disc so I'm gonna assume this one is broken you could likely take the top off like I could hear it spinning there um, and maybe clean the laser with a little bit of alcohol and a cotton swab and, and that might make it work but honestly it's just a DVD player they were bringing about $30 on eBay I could get you know 15 20 for it in the antique mall I'm not really going to spend the time to take it apart so this one along with that VHS player will be getting dumped back into the e-waste bin these things do happen this is why you gotta test it though and god even that's not very clear I really do need a new camera I tell you but I have to start a GoFundMe no I'm I'm just kidding. I'll, uh, I'll I have a new camera that I've been looking at, or a couple different ones. So eventually, I'll have a new camera, or some new lenses for some. Mo All right. Next thing we're gonna get into testing is the Big Techniques Stereo Hall. So before I can test it, I have to hook it all up. It's not as bad as it looks. It's pretty straightforward for those of you who are pretty new with electronics. It's pretty basic. You have, for just the complete basics of it, your left and right audio cable. That's sound going out of the CD player. And they all need to run into an amp. So up here, I will put it in the CD in. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. It will work the same as long as it's the in, not the out. Some of those have an out for like tape recorders and stuff and if you're wondering what that bar is there should be another one on the bottom that's for phono inputs if you wanted to run a record player and since it has these fancy plugs in the back too i don't need to get a power bar i'll plug in the stereo uh like the main amp and then i'll just plug everything else into the uh power accessories on the back the ac outlets on the back of the amp and i got myself a nice little video cable that i can test again i'll throw a couple of these bagged up with the listing um, I actually did have this listed on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and uh, it sold on Facebook Marketplace for the whole set, the CD player, the um, AM FM tuner, the amp, and the cassette player and it sold for $140 locally which is nice, I did not want to ship all of this. 
All right, we got everything hooked up and plugged in. First thing I'll probably test will be the radio. Maybe the cassette. It is already set to cassette. Uh, when going to test it, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, basically, on the left side, there's a speaker A and B button. I just didn't have the right speaker set pushed down. Uh, you have an option to run two different speakers, I guess, with this stereo. So I turned it all the way down first just to make sure it wasn't that loud. Switched it back to speaker A, and then we got some sound out of her. There. Working. All right, so the AM FM tuner works. Next thing to test will be the CD player. Some big shiny 90s. That was a old, well, I guess, no, it came out when the 90s was big. The door ended up sticking a little bit. I opened it and closed it a few times, put a little bit of white lithium grease on the track. It took me like two minutes. Completely fixed it, and the CD player works perfectly on it as well. Song. Seems to work. Alright, last thing to check is the cassette tape with some Billy Idol. We'll put it in. I think it's actually an interview, which is kind of weird for cassette tape, but it works great. I'm taking a chance here, Billy. I don't know if you're going to divulge this. But what is your real name? Uh, well, I listen to Billy Idol because that's the name I've given myself. I guess a Billy Idol interview. Else. Choose what? Just like anybody else, my mother gave me my name. Yeah, but I'm not content with that. <laughs> Alright, so almost down to the last thing to test. I'm basically just going to pop the cassette tape uh, into the other side of the deck just to make sure that side works as well. If you guys are ever testing a cassette tape and you notice the sound is really muffled or quiet, two things have happened. Either the little foam on the cassette tape you're using to test behind where the tape sits is gone so the tape pushes down too far, it can't get a good read, or the head in the cassette tape is just really dirty and a little bit of alcohol and a Q-tip, you can literally open up the door and just wipe the head. You can't miss it, it's a big chrome thing, it's super easy to do. And that fixes it 9 times out of 10. There's just a bunch of dust or they smoked near it and there's nicotine on it or whatever else. It happens. But uh, pretty happy about all this. Happy it all worked. So far only just one VCR and one CD player not working. And the last thing I have to test is an Onkyo receiver. Which I don't know how this new of an Onkyo receiver ended up in the E-Waste. It does have a dent in the top. Which a dent isn't really a big deal. I'll push it out from the other side. And I will get that thing brought up on the counter next. And we'll test it. This I might keep for myself though. Alright, here's the Onkyo. I left the Technics, uh, Techniques, Techniques, whatever you want to call it. CD player hooked up. Just so I could test the sound on the Onkyo. I have them uh, hooked up to some massive Fisher speakers. Which you can't see off to the other side. And uh, when I hook it up, it played perfectly. The volume came through the Onkyo's just fine and I'm super happy with this thing you can kind of see the dent on the very top it's just on the outer shell so I can it's four screws and unscrew it and undent it it has like six HDMI inputs on the back a bunch of component and S video and composite so a bunch of legacy support uh, it doesn't do um, 4k through HDMI it just does 1080p but I was looking for a new receiver for my game room so this might be a pretty good option, I think. I'm going to test it out some more. Um, it also sells for, wow, there goes that camera again, no focus. It also sells for around $200 still used for this model. This model was about 600 new. So again, super happy to get it. I don't know, like, I don't know how it ended up in the E-Waste. Maybe someone got a 4K TV and a new receiver with it. And um, yeah, it got thrown out. Now I own it. Super happy about it. Uh, it's amazing what you guys find in an e-waste. I still need to set up my own bins to be quite honest That's something I got to get on because the amount of stuff that gets thrown out is unbelievable And then I mean the stuff that is broken and you don't use uh, you get scrap value for it, right? So it's a win-win Anyways guys that does it for this video. Yes, it has been long overdue. Sorry It took so long. I should be back into at least doing like Minimum three videos a month at a minimum. Hopefully more than that um, like I said, it's just been a while. It's been, it's been a, a crazy couple years with a baby and a new job and a house reno and it all just kind of comes at once, right? But I am back and I hopefully will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.
And if you're not already, subscribe for more content. If you like what you watched, hit that like button. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks again, everyone. Bye for now.